Well, more than 50,000 people are packing into St Peter's Square in Vatican City for our moment in history. Mary MacKillop will be honoured in Rome by the Pope, the climax of a campaign that first began in the 1920s. She started the day Mary MacKillop, she ended it St Mary of the Cross, a transformation a hundred years in the making. Alexander MacKillop and Flora MacDonald both emigrated to Australia from Scotland. They married in Melbourne in 1840. Mary, their eldest child, was born in Fitzroy, Melbourne on the 15th of January, 1842. Mary had seven siblings. Life was not always easy for this family. Hardship and poverty were part of daily life for the MacKillops. Alexander frequently lacked financial means. Often the family did not know what it was to have a home of their own. Mary's extended family supported them in times of difficulty and hardship. At the age of 16, Mary began working and supported her family. At various times, Mary undertook employment as a clerk, a teacher and as a governess. While working as a governess for her relatives in Panola, South Australia, Mary met Father Julian Tennyson Woods. In 1866, inspired and encouraged by Father Tennyson Woods, Mary opened the first St Joseph's School in a disused stable in Panola. Other young women were attracted to the work Mary was doing, and so began the Congregation of the Sisters of St Joseph of the Sacred Heart. The sisters were a mobile force ready to go wherever they were needed, regardless of the geographical confines or lack of a worshipping church community. In 1867, after the establishment of the first school at Panola, Mary was asked to go to Adelaide to start a school there. In August 1867, Mary took her first vows before Father Julian Woods. Circumstances led to Mary being invalidly excommunicated by Bishop Shield in September 1871. 47 sisters were expelled. The excommunication was lifted the following February by the dying bishop and Mary was found to be innocent of the charges and the institute was restored. Mary travelled to Rome in 1873 to have the rule approved. Mary returned to South Australia in 1875. The sisters spread to the small outback settlements and large cities across Australia and New Zealand. Mary saw many needs and as one doing her best to fulfil these needs, Mary opened orphanages, homes for the homeless, destitute, ex-prisoners and former prostitutes. Even though life was not at all smooth sailing for Mary, who knew opposition from within and outside the church, Mary would refuse to attack those who undermined her work or those who falsely accused her. Mary knew forgiveness in abundance and so readily shared the gift with those opposing her. Mary suffered a stroke in 1902 and was paralysed for seven years. Mary died at Mount Street Convent, North Sydney, on the 8th of August, 1909. Mary was canonised a saint within the Catholic Church by Pope Benedict XVI on the 17th of October, 2010. Mary Helen MacKillop, known as St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, became the first canonised Australian born saint. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome everyone as we come together to celebrate this feast of St Mary of the Cross MacKillop. 
It's rather strange gathering like this, but like Mary McKillop, we too must adapt to the time in which we live. I'd like to welcome the Sisters of St. Joseph of the Sacred Heart who live here in the Wollongong Diocese, who join us to lead much of our liturgy today. We join also all the Josephite Sisters throughout Australia, Scotland, Ireland, New Zealand, Peru. All around the world, the Sisters of St. Joseph, through the influence and the example and the charism of Mary MacKillop, lead us in the way of knowing God in special ways. I invite you to join with us in that Josephite charism today as we celebrate Mary MacKillop. So let us recognise that God is present with us as we quieten our hearts to pray. Let us pray. O God, source of all goodness, who have shown us in St. Mary of the Cross, a woman of faith living by the power of the cross, teach us by her example to live the gospel in changing times and to respect and defend the dignity of all in our land. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. You are God's chosen race, his saints. He loves you and you should be clothed in sincere compassion, in kindness and humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with one another. Forgive each other as soon as a quarrel begins. The Lord has forgiven you. Now you must do the same. Over all these clothes, to keep them together and complete them, put on love. And may the peace of Christ reign in your hearts, because it is for this that you were called together as parts of one body. Always be thankful. Let the message of Christ in all its richness find a home with you. Teach each other and advise each other in all wisdom. With gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and inspired songs to God. And never say or do anything except in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The Word of the Lord.
My soul is thirsting for you, thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. So I will praise you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. My soul is thirsting for you, thirsting for you, O Lord, my God, for you. My soul is thirsting for you, thirsting for you, O oh Lord, my God. During her lifetime, Whenever Mary MacKillop wrote to the sisters, she always ended her letters with her wish for them in living out their vocation to follow Jesus as his true disciples. Her very last wish for them, sent in the last year of her life when she was already very ill, was this. Do not be afraid, love one another, Bear with one another and let charity guide you in all your life. And she signs off as your loving mother, Mary of the Cross. These words, in a sense, are the culmination of her life, lived as a faithful disciple of Jesus. I think Paul would have been very delighted to have her as one of his beloved Colossians. He writes to them from his prison in Rome around the year 60. This then was toward the end of his life and can be seen as the culmination of all he had learned and experienced as a disciple of Jesus. He admonishes his readers to live by the qualities that marked Jesus' life and then goes on to ask them to let the peace of Christ reign in your hearts. Always be thankful. Surely a challenge as he is writing from prison. But then gratitude was a mark of his life from the time he became a follower of Jesus. Gratitude to her good God was to the mark of our St. Mary MacKillop's life. In all the events of her life, she was aware of her loving good God at the heart of every event. On the 25th anniversary of the founding of the congregation, she wrote to the sisters, speaking of her joy and gratitude to our good God for all he has done for his work. But her gratitude was not just expressed for happy events. 
in all the sadness and disappointments and hurts that were hers. She found her peace, as did Paul, in her belief that God was with her and with her sisters. Today, as we remember all that she is for us, we are filled with gratitude for her inspiration. In this troubled and uncertain time, we are challenged to find peace in our hearts and to be thankful that our good God is right here at the heart of the events of each day. So indeed, with both Paul and Mary of the Cross, let us be thankful and let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. God, the creator of all things, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Mary of the Cross, pray for us. Faithful to the will of God, pray for us. Trusting God. Responding to the Holy Spirit, pray for us. Devoted to the heart of Jesus, pray for us. Accepting of the cross in life, pray for us. Forgiving all who hurt you, pray for us. Defending human dignity, pray for us. Mary Makila, intercede for us on our life's journey. Come be with us. Mary Makila, intercede for us on our life's journey. Come be with us. Saint Mary of the Cross, pray for us, living in simplicity. Pray for us, serving the neglected one. Pray for us, teaching God's little one. Pray for us, standing with the vulnerable. Pray for us, serving with compassion.
Throughout her life, St. Mary of the Cross left us many powerful reflections on which we can contemplate. Let's take the time to be still with some of these sayings that draw us into the life of God. If I could tell the love of God I'd sing of one my heart enjoys Of one who whispers warm and calm Of one whose tender touch persists If I could tell the love of God I'd sing of beauty barely seen Of shadow gums and stringy bark Of tracks and water hard to if I could tell the love of God, I'd sing of women seen as fools, because in Joseph's hidden way, they crossed an empty land with trust. If I could tell the love of God, I'd sing of women working hard Receiving bits of broken bread And poor enough to serve the poor If I could tell the love of God I'd sing of Christ who chose the cross his wisdom brings the mighty down His strength uplifts the stable's child If I could tell the love of God I'd sing of Christ who chose the cross His justice mends a broken world His mercy turns the grave around
If I could tell the love of God, if I could tell the love of Let us pray. God of providence, with grateful hearts we remember the power for goodness that Mary MacKillop is in our world. On this her feast day, we give thanks. May we be touched anew with her spirit of prophetic charity and generous participation in mission. May we ponder the whisperings of God in our heart and respond to those needs around us. We ask this in the name of Christ, the Sacred Heart, and the Spirit of Mission. Amen. May the blessings of our hospitable God be among us, abundant, overflowing, extravagant, embracing over all. May the blessings of Saint Joseph rest well with us, wherever we are called to be Josephite in the world, near and far, north and south, young and old. May the blessings of our father Julian Woods grow in us a great love and curiosity about the landscape of earth and appreciation of the down-to-earthness of our lives. May the blessings of our patron John the Baptist sustain us with a heart for mission until our last breath in making the cause of the poor our cause. May the blessings of the prophet Elijah encourage us with a vision for this time and a patient working out of its interpretation. May the blessings of Mary MacKillop fire us anew with generosity and openness, stretching our imaginations to see the charism's ways. May the blessings of our good God remain with us always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.